everyone welcome back to my channel in this video i would like to share you some identical features of closed reading tetany okay okay first of all we have some identical features of the genus closed reading okay here genus closed reading consists of gram positive anaerobic spore forming bacilli that is the species of clostridium genus are gram positive anaerobic in nature then they have ability to produce spores and they are rod shaped okay and their spores are wider than their vegetative cells giving the bacillus a swollen appearance resembling spindle in shape hence the name clostridium cluster means spindle then clostridium species are pleomorphic in nature that is sometime they can change their shape okay then clostridia are motile with the peritrichous flagella but there is some exceptions that is clostridium perfringens and clostridium tetany they are non motile that is they have no locomotory organelles like flagella then this clostridium are non capsulated but there is some exceptions that is clostridium perfringens and clostridium butricum they are capsulated while others are non capsulated okay then this clostridium genus consists of pathogenic strains such as clostridium perfringens and clostridium tetany this clostridium perfringens is the causative agent of the disease gas gangrene and clostridium tetany is the causative agent of the disease tetanus but some species like clostridium acetobutylicum have industrial importance that is they are used for the production of industrial chemicals such as acetone butanol etc and some species like clostridium perfringens and clostridium tetany are normal flora of human intestine and animal intestine okay okay next we are going to discuss about identical features of clostridium tetany here clostridium tetany is one of the important pathogen coming under the genus clostridium and it is the causative agent of the disease known as tetanus okay and this tetanus disease is ancient disease which is first described by hippocrates and aretus and the etiological role of this bacilli in this tetanus is first described by kitto sato in 1889 who isolated this bacilli in the pure culture okay then they are ubiquitous in nature that is they are widely distributed in the environment mainly in soil and are the normal flora of human and animal intestine next is about their morphology we already told that this clostridium genus are gram positive in nature right so clostridium tetany are gram positive slender bacilli about 4 to 8 into 0.5 micrometer in size that is 4 to 8 micrometer in length and 0.5 micrometer in breadth okay and this clostridium bacillus have a straight axis parallel side and rounded end and in cultures they are arranged in single or occasionally in chains then they are spore formers and their spores are spherical terminal and bulging that is they are spherical in shape and their position is in terminal and their width is more than that of their vegetative cell thus this giving the bacillus as a drumstick appearance then another feature is that it is not capsulated and motile with the peritrichous flagella okay although some strains of clostridium tetany are non motile like clostridium type 4 are non motile some are motile with the peritrichous flagella okay okay next is about cultural characteristics as we know that this clostridium genus are anaerobic in nature right so clostridium tetany are obligate anaerobes that is they can only grow in the absence of oxygen and their optimum temperature being 37 degree celsius and the ph is 7.4 then they can grow on ordinary media they do not require any enriched or enrichment media uh, they can grow in the ordinary media itself okay 
but their growth may be improved by the addition of blood or serum into the media and on agar surface they produces fine translucent film with the swarming growth swarming means spreading growth all over the agar surface okay so their colony morphology is fine and they form translucent colony with the swarming growth okay due to this swarming or spreading growth we can isolate this clostridium tetany from the mixed culture by using fields technique fields technique means slope of nutrient agar is inoculated with the mixed cell culture at the bottom of the tube and after incubation anaerobically for 24 hours subcultures from the top of the tube will yield a pure growth of tetanus bacilli okay that is we inoculate the organism or mixed culture in the bottom of the tube and the pure culture we can get this pure culture from the top of the tube this is due to their swarming growth okay and this technique is known as field technique and in deep agar shay cultures the colonies are spherical fluffy balls 1 to 3 mm in diameter and have filaments arranged radially deep agar shay culture means before the solidification of agar tube we inoculate the organism and shake well after that uh, solidify the agar and then incubate this is known as deep agar shake culture in such cultures their colony morphology is spherical fluffy balls and their size is 1 to 3 mm in diameter and have filaments that are arranged radially okay next in gelatin stab they form fir tree type growth with the slow liquefaction then on robertson cooked meat broth they produces turbidity with some gas production and on blood agar they produces alpha hemolysis which is later develop into beta hemolysis due to the production of hemolysin known as tetanolysin okay so these are the cultural characteristics of clostridium tetany okay next we can discuss about their biochemical reactions this clostridium tetany have proteolytic activity but no saccharolytic activity saccharolytic means they do not degrade or ferment sugars okay then they form indole that is indole test is positive in case of clostridium tetany and the methyl red and vasgus proscar test are negative in case of clostridium tetany okay and then h2s production is negative and nitrates are not reduced into nitrites then gelatin liquefaction occurs very slowly and this clostridium tetany produces a greenish fluorescence on media containing neutral red like macconkey agar okay then a resistance here we can differentiate clostridium tetany strains based on their spores resistance towards heat okay that is spores of the most of the strains are killed by boiling for 10 to 15 minutes but some are resistant boiling for up to 3 hours then the destruction of spores to be ensured by autoclaving at 121 degree celsius for 20 minutes and the spores of clostridium tetany can survive in soil for many years and are resistant to most of the antiseptics that is they do not destroyed by 5% phenol or 0.1% mercury chloride solution in 2 weeks or more okay but iodine and hydrogen peroxide kill the spores within few hours that's all about resistance next we are going to discuss about virulence factors of clostridium tetany okay here this clostridium tetany have ability to produce powerful toxins this toxin become the virulence factor of clostridium tetany okay here clostridium tetany produces at least two distinct toxin a hemolysin known as tetanolysin and a powerful neurotoxin known as tetanospasmin and this tetanolysin is a heat labile and oxygen labile hemolysin which is antigenically related or similar to that of oxygen labile hemolysin produced by clostridium perfringens streptococcus pyogenes etc and this tetanolysin is responsible for hemolysis produced by 
clostridium tetani in the blood agar and it have it is not relevant in the pathogenesis of tetanus that is it, it does not have any important role in the pathogenesis of tetanus then tetanospasmin is the toxin responsible for this disease tetanus okay here this tetanospasmin is oxygen stable but relatively heat labile that is they can be inactivated at 65 degree celsius in 5 minutes okay and this tetanospasmin is plasmid coded that is the production of tetanospasmin is coded by the gene present in the plasmid contained in the clostridium tetan okay and this tetanospasmin can be toxoided that is they can be converted to toxoids by the presence of formaldehyde or by the treatment of formaldehyde and it is a good antigen that is they can induce the production of antibody against it that is it can specifically nucleize it by antitoxin and this toxin has been crystallized and it is simple protein or protein in nature composed of single polypeptide chain and on release from the bacillus it autolyzes to form a heterodimer consist of heavy chain and a light chain and this purified toxin is active in extremely small amount so the MLD or minimal lethal dose for human beings is about 130 nanogram. We will join you with the next part of this video. Thank you.